good day. This is Sandra and I thought maybe today we would bring a uh, scanned PDF into our mat and see if we can't turn it into an applique. This was taken from a book that had a really nice applique in it and I thought maybe you might want to see how I bring it in and change it. This is going to be imported as a vector. You'll see it right here. I do that because the vector is so much easier to work with. Um, I like to make sure that we've got a good print. And now all we're going to do is take this PDF import. And its name is Winterberry. It came from a, a Winterberry quilt that I had found I thought was very pretty. Now we're going to go to our trace window and select trace area and with this all we have to do is just cover the area and if you'll notice you'll see an awful lot of yellow there. Well now all I have to do is hit the double trace line and drag the original off of the page and if you'll notice now I have the same thing only there's double lines here and so what I want to do here is select again and remember that your select tool is up here and I, so far I haven't gone off select so it's remained that way sometimes we have to go back and reselect select okay but let's release compound path that's right here um, all this means is that we're separating the the path of the lines and we want to do that so that we can um, um, have a um, separate pattern that's individual and so we're going to take some of these things out of here like this this isn't part of the pattern and if you notice now I'm going to enlarge this with this little uh, spot here I'm going to enlarge this because I want to really see what I'm getting into and what I notice is this double line there's one of them that's larger and one that's smaller. So I'm going to take the smaller ones from the inside and I'm going to take those and just drag them out. I'm holding my mouse, my left mouse key in and dragging and dragging each one of those. I'm also going to select them, right click and delete. Cut. How about we cut them? Okay. Now, there's some other things on this page that don't need to be here, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just holding my mouse key down, right click, and when we cut, we cut them off the page so you know no one can see what we have. We're going to use our little scroll up here, and you can see there's some little bits of things that don't belong there. We wouldn't use that in an applique. If you'll notice the branch has an awkward appearance, we're going to change that in a little while too. It won't take long. There's really not a whole lot to it. Um, but I do want to get rid of some of the just little things like this that if they are not on there, we don't have to worry about them. So now that I've cut them, I'm going to go back by using this key here that's going to put fit to window. It's not going to change the shape or size of anything. It only puts us back in the center and we're going to start pulling this apart. This is an individual piece as are all of those but the best way to separate this for me is to move the branch and then s just start selecting all of this and we're going to move it over here so it's out of our way. Notice one of our little berries got left. But with this little piece right here we need him to look better. He doesn't look so good. So again, I'm going to I'm going to bring him up. And all I'm going to do is because I have the select key, I can choose that or I can choose the edit points and I'm going to edit point or I could have double clicked it would have done the same thing. But when you get this little arrow like this, you can actually delete that one. And we're going to delete a few of these because sometimes they're uh, the way they're drawn too many 
um, vector points are on there. And we want these to be a little straighter, and they're straighter if we don't have as many. So see, that whole side looks just a little bit better. It could even look better, but we can correct that a little at a time. But all we do is delete them, and then eventually we'll have to straighten some of them out. Um, this one right here, if you'll notice, looks a little wonky, as does this one because the little blue there, all I'm doing is moving it with my uh, with my mouse, holding the left left finger down, and just, I don't know, tidying it all up maybe. I added a point there just by clicking on it when I have that little arrow. But I think that's good enough for right now. So we're gonna put this back down where it was, okay? And we can use this little um, design that we started from, if we want to, to see how to put it back together. And all we're going to do is rotate this around like that. And I'm going to actually bring it way down in size so it doesn't take up as much room. And then I can see what to do with each one of these pieces. I can tell that this branch needs to, needs to stand up a little bit. And I can also tell that both of these um, could stand to go up here. And we're going to turn them around. Just turn the whole thing around. And we managed to get one of the little parts in the wrong place. So we've got another one that needs to come up here. And all we're going to do is make him turn upside down too. We're just grabbing it with the um, grabbing it with the mouse and dragging it, just like you drag anything when you're working on a on a surface. Left finger down and drag with your mouse. Each one of these are separate still, remember. So even though we've got everything going together, this one right here, we can look at the original and tell that we need that um, basically to be just laying down. So that's what we're going to have it do. We're going to have it come right back over here and sit down. Okay. And then we've got some um, leaves that go off this other side. This one would be about right here, I guess, maybe a little further down. But when you click on him, you can get your little green turn tool and just turn it to whatever direction you want it. I could have laid this on top of the pattern, but actually I kind of like the freedom of um, just being able to put them where I want them because I might decide that um, that that one had to take a full trip around the world there. And I notice he needs to come down a little. Okay, now each one of our little berries uh, is going to come over here, and we're going to just keep adding those to wherever we think they, wherever we think they should go. We can kind of just just judge by the size they are. Okay, uh, this probably needs to come up a little. You can, you'll get. Um, you'll get used to dragging things around and playing with them because sometimes um, you actually might not want them the way the original artist did them but in this case I think they work pretty well now I don't really need this anymore I probably will save it when I finish with this but now what we're going to do is what we learned before we're going to take some of the fabrics that we've got and in this case, I do have some Christmas fabrics. 
So I thought, let's go down here and see what do I have that I might like to put in this. Um, of course, you can figure almost any of your reds and greens are going to work. I could go very funky with this if I wanted to. I'm going to select it. Remember, it you really can't do much of an activity unless it's selected. But I'm going to put some uh, polka dots in that. They don't really look all that good, probably because they're too large. So we're going to go with a little bit of animal print. And then um, this one and this one above it, uh, both the leaves, they could actually have some green stripe in them. And then if we wanted to, we could take this flower and this flower, and I'm selecting them um, by holding down the shift key and clicking with my left button there. Um, we might want to make them a different print of, uh, remember this is very silly looking, but it doesn't matter. We're just having some fun. Um, then I could just add some red to the end of those. And then we want to give our, our branch a color. Uh, he could be silver. Or he could have a uh, nice little zebra print in him. And I'll show you how to change those stripes a little bit in a minute. Then we've also got all of our berries. And our berries we're going to do like we've done before. We're just going to shift and hit each one of the berries and see if we can't um, add a color to those. Okay, just a kind of a pretty little red, okay? But I still think the little stripe here could be cute, but we're going to use an advanced option and see if we can't turn that around a little bit. How about if we just take those stripes and move them around because if I were fussy cutting I might want to do that and just make them all a little bit more fun. Now let's select the whole thing even though it's not perfect the grouping process can be a lot of fun. Now I can make these any size I want and when they cut I'll make sure they're not uh, upon each other. I'll always divide them off into pieces to cut the pattern pieces or if I decide I want to do them with heat and bond and some light heat and bond on the back I can um, cut them on the silhouette and just iron them to a background fabric. But now you can see how easy it is to change a page that you have copied out of the um, copied or scanned out of the uh, book that you like and turn it into an applique that's ready to use. Everything will be printed for you, cut for you, and um, how much easier is that, friends? Well, I hope you enjoyed it. This is Sandra signing off for today. Have a great day. Bye.